it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. And welcome to another vlog. This vlog's gonna be going up like after Christmas, but currently it is still pre-Christmas and this vlog is gonna be taking me up to Christmas day. So here is some little festive content for you post festive season. I was thinking about what to do for this vlog and I thought it would be a good time to not buy any books and to tackle the TBR. So my physical TBR is about two and a half shelves. I have a lot of books in my physical TBR and I do this thing where like I buy a book and I'm like oh my god I cannot wait to read you and then I'm like that meme where then like the next book comes along and I'm like <sighs> and all the books on my shelf are like <sighs> So I want to just read books I already have, reignite those flames, you know? And I thought it would be fun to decide what I'm reading off my TBR by having my friends and family choose the books for me. So most of my like close friends aren't like particularly bookish, I would say. I thought if I just send them a photo of all of the front covers of the books would just be going off like their feels, you know, or what the covers look like. So I thought that'd be fun. So yesterday I went, took all the books off my shelf, put them on the floor and then took this photo, which I'll insert. Usually in these videos, I'll read like three books, but I sent it to five people. So I sent it to my boyfriend, my sister, and my three best friends who were all on a group chat with. And I just sent the picture and I said, please let me know what book you'd like me to read next using coordinates. So like first row, first book. I got like four responses quite rapidly and I don't know who to choose out of the three of them. So we'll start with the definite. So my friend replied first, because bless her heart, she's isolating. She's got nothing else to do. I was like, perfect, I'll use you as a pawn in my game. And she said, row five, book two, which was Minicana by Angie Cruz. And I was so excited that she chose this because I was so excited to read this book. I'd waited for it to come out in paperback. I bought it a few months ago um, from a really nice little independent bookshop when I was away for the weekend and I haven't picked it up. So this was shortlisted for the Women's Prize. I'm sure a lot of people have already read it. It was like very big on Bookstagram and stuff. And you're following a 15 year old Anna who has grown up in the Dominican Republic and then moves to New York City. And I think it might be a bit of a coming of age story. Super excited to read this. So this is a definite. The next person to reply was my sister and she picked from the cover under the Udala Trees by Chinello Ocparanta. And again, I was like, I'm actually so excited. I've really wanted to read this book. Like, in fact, just to go on one of my many tangents, I'd taken a photo that I don't know if I ended up uploading it to my Instagram, but it was like a few books that I'd like to get in before the end of the year. And this and Dominicana were both on that list. This is set in Nigeria in 1968 at the height of the Civil War. And you're following two young girls who our friends potentially enter into a romantic relationship. I'm not too sure. I do think it might be a bit of an LGBT story. And yeah, read loads of Nigerian fiction this year, been loving it and so excited to read this. And then, so my other friend, my other friend, I only have three, and my boyfriend replied at like basically exactly the same time. So I'm like, do I choose my boyfriend? Because then it's like a sister, a friend, a boyfriend, of which I obviously have many. I don't know. So he, he chose The Mystery of Henry Pick um, because he said there's a cute little typewriter on it. And I mean, he's not wrong. This is translated from the French and it's like a literary whodunit kind of about a library. Um, I think it's quite like lighthearted, quite fun. So I could definitely be tempted to read this. This could be like a good little pre-Christmas treat for me. And then my other friend sent in her coordinates and it took me to The Offing by Benjamin Myers, which I do really want to read this. I like hauled this quite recently and I do really want to get to it, but I think it's quite a summery book. Like there's a lot of like sea swimming in Whitby and I'm like, you don't swim in the sea in Whitby in winter. So you never know, I might get to four books, but I think I'm going to prioritize The Mystery of Henry Pick because then we can see who has the best taste, my boyfriend, my sister, or my best friend. Who knows? So yeah, that's what we're gonna do this week and I'm excited to have a push to read books that have been on my TBR. I'm gonna insert my little video of me putting all the books on the floor if I haven't done that yet. Today, I really have some things to do. I need to finish a quiz round for my work Zoom Christmas party that's happening tonight. So I'm probably gonna do that now and I'll come back to you when we get some reading done. watching Christmas with the Cranks while I do my quiz. Well, I finally finished my Christmas quiz 
for tonight literally took me like hours but it was very nice because i was just watching christmas films i watched christmas with the cranks as i said which is actually such a good christmas film i rate it very highly and then i've just been listening to christmas music because i feel like i haven't spent enough time this year just listening to christmas music but i also kind of want to read so i'm going to <laughs> seen that tiktok where the guy's like uh, so I'm going to pick up Dominicana, I think, and read a little bit of that. It's only like three o'clock. The afternoon is open to me. I'm going to start drinking quite early, I think, because, you know, it is the Christmas party. It's just that I'm alone. Hello. So it's my Christmas work party tonight. So I've curled my hair, which is making me feel better about its length. I'm going to go do a little secret Santa on Zoom, the quiz. Someone made a music video of all the staff. I'm very excited about it. Oh, I actually also read... The first 100 pages of Dominicana was meant to update you on that, totally didn't. I got through the 100 pages quite quickly because it's not written in vignettes, but like it almost is, it has that kind of feel. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm a sucker for a coming of age story. I'll tell you about it tomorrow in more detail, but I'm enjoying it. So last night was so fun, as fun as a Zoom party could be. My team won the quiz, <laughs> obvs. And in Secret Santa, I was very kindly gifted a tripod because I don't own a tripod. I am not a real YouTuber. I film on my phone and I prop it on, like the angle right now is because you're propped on a rocking chair. Um, so how cool is this? I'm, I'm very excited. I'd like tried to talk about Dominicana, but I was like doing too many things at once. I'm enjoying this. Uh, like I say, it is kind of a coming of age story following Anna, who when she is like 13, living in Dominica, she's basically kind of like promised in marriage. It starts in the 1960s to this much older man. He's actually like 32. Um, it's pretty gross. And he goes to New York. She goes with him and her family in Dominic have this idea that, you know, she's going to be this like really rich woman in New York and can like help them out with money and stuff. Um, and the reality is obviously quite different. They are immigrants living in New York City in the 60s and her relationship is bad with this man. Um, I just like the way it's written. Like I said yesterday, it's kind of like quite short chapters. I like Anna as a character. I'm interested to see kind of where it goes. I'm kind of a bit hungover, not gonna lie. And this is when lockdown is just not the one because... There's a certain type of hangover where I like the only thing that will do is a Greg's. I need a Greg's. I am a, a Northern gal, a Newcastle person, and I need Greg's in my life. And the nearest one is like a half an hour walk away. And I'm like, do I want to do that just for a Greg's? Do I? I don't know. I need to eat something and it needs to be disgusting is about where I'm at right now. So, yeah. Okay. So yesterday when I was... um like before the party, I had to work out which thing that had arrived for me was my work secret Santa because I have, I'm in two secret Santas, a work one and then one with my friends that were doing on Saturday night and no one had put like, it just said Grace Keen basically, which is my surname. And then another parcel arrived and I have no idea what that is. So I sent in a photo to work and someone texted Alex being like, it's this one she needs to unwrap. So now I have these two and I have no idea what they are. This feels like a book. I don't remember buying a book. Let's open them. Oh, yes. Now I remember. It's a proof from Bloomsbury. How pretty is that? I love it. Um, I'd forgotten that. She'd asked if she could send me that. So it says, being Tommy's mother is too much for Sonia. Too much love, too much fear, too much longing for the cool wine she drinks from the bottle each night. Because Sonia is burning the fish fingers and driving too fast and swimming too far from the shore. And Tommy's life is in her hands. It's called Bright Burning Things by Lisa Harding. Um, I'd forgotten about that. Exciting. It's like really beautifully wrapped from Etsy. And there isn't like a note in it. Do I open it? I'm too scared to open it. Okay, so it's definitely not my secret Santa. I have no idea what it is. Let's open it. Oh, it's a Christmas present for my mum that my sister got delivered to me. Well, isn't that a disappointment? Having such a nice hangover day. Um, I'm watching Let It Snow on Netflix. Yeah, I was going to say it's shit. It's actually, I think it's okay. It's very like teen angsty, but I like it. Um, And I've ordered some food. I've really been quite decadent and treated myself to lunch from this like really nice bar restaurant 
in the village, but for some reason it, I couldn't collect it. I could only collect it at four o'clock or I could have it delivered at 12.30. So I feel like the laziest person ever. It's literally like a two minute walk, basically. Um, but they wouldn't let me collect it. So Princess Grace is getting food delivered. Oh, I just heard a car door. That might be it. Oh my days, I'm so excited. Let me show you what I got. These are Korean tacos. Ah, so good. Philly cheesesteak spring rolls. They're literally like my favorite thing. And then I just got some fries. Like the fact she included two napkins is telling as to um whether this is an appropriate amount of food for just me, but I am so excited. Hello, just some Mandalorian, I think it's called on in the background, which obviously I don't watch, but I will tolerate for baby Yoda. I have finished Dominicana. And also I got my beer 52 box today, so I'm having a beer. Um, this is a pills, just a pills, just cheeky pills to ease myself in. I loved this. I really, really liked this book. It's quite a like, it is a quiet story, but also there's quite a lot of like family drama and that is usually my thing. I really like that the book only really spans like 11 months or something. Um, I like books with a kind of tight focus. And I just think it's a really, really good story. I thought all the characters were well developed. I thought the kind of drama was good, but it was also, you're only in Anna's head like all the time. So it is still quite kind of like introspective. I thought it was a really interesting look at the immigrant experience. I think I said before that she was from Dominica. She's from the Dominican Republic. Um, and kind of like looking at that in the context of the 1960s in New York. And I just think it's a really kind of vibrant, on the back it said musical prose, um, which I totally relate to. And yeah, it just felt like a very vibrant story that, New York was kind of evoked very well. And yeah, I just loved it. I just think it was a really nice, I say nice, it is quite brutal in parts, um, but just a really good coming of age story and a look at one character and her life and her family and a lot about kind of women in relationships and in family life and in society a bit and a little bit of, like some good stuff about motherhood, particularly towards the end. And yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed it. Would highly recommend it. Hello, I have not done any reading today. It's like three o'clock and I've spent all morning trying to finish my Christmas shopping. I had like most of the big bits done. Well, all of them really in like November, but me and my family are doing like a little kind of like cute, funny presents in a stocking situation. And now Alex is spending Christmas with us. He can't go home. And I was like, I've already bought him 24 presents. If you've been watching my vlogs, you know, I did like an advent calendar for him. So I had to come up with some more. So it's been a stressful morning, but I'm done now, I'm happy. And now I'm gonna go and meet my friends outside for a little walk and a beverage, which I'm very excited for. So no reading, but I'm happy. Good morning, uh, it's Sunday now. I didn't do any reading yesterday um, because I was having such a nice day and then, not gonna lie, the announcement came out about changing the Christmas rules and it was just a Debbie Downer to everything, but I'm not gonna talk about it because you're seeing this after Christmas and like, if I do, I'll just go on a massive rant about how much I hate the government. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, finished Dominicana on Friday night, as you've seen, loved it. Well done to Alice, who my friend who chose that for me. So far, you're in the lead, but you're also in last place. Now I'm gonna read under the Udala trees, um, which is what my sister picked out for me. And we'll see how I feel about this one. And it's a Sunday, I have no plans, obviously. It's actually quite a nice sunny day. Might do a walk later, but for now, I'm gonna settle in and read some of this. Hello, it's a bit later on now. I just had some lunch and then I started doing the dishes, but then I smashed a glass and I took that as a sign from our Lord to say, stop doing the dishes. Um, and instead I'm gonna eat one of these gazillionaire cheesecake like goo pods because it is christmas even if it really doesn't feel like it tasty um i've read 100 pages of under the udala trees and it's an interesting one it's basically set around the time of the biafran civil war in nigeria and you're following a young girl and the first kind of chapter is very much in the midst of the war and she tells you that that was when her mother decided to send her away so basically our mother sends her away to like kind of work as a house girl and then you jump forward in time to 1970, which is like two years later, when the war is over and she's kind of reunited with her mother, but something has happened basically with another girl when she was away working as a house girl. You're not, you don't really see any of that, but it's implied that she basically was in some sort of relationship or had some sort of romantic entanglement with this other teenage girl. And that's caused 
drama. And I'm not sure, I imagine we might like skip back in time and see more of their relationship and what actually happened because at the minute it's not implied, like it is explicit, but you don't really get any of the details. Um, so I'm interested. I think it is really interesting reading about the Biafran War. I've read a couple of books about that, but I think it's actually probably going to be more of like a personal story than like a political or social story. I'm not sure. So I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, keen to keep on reading. Hello, so I realised I was just like in a bad mood today, needed to fix that. So I'm going to finish my wrapping and I'm watching the holiday because that is so festive. In fact, these are already wrapped, but every year I always end up buying people in my life books because, you know, it's my brand. Um, so I could actually show you some of the books that I bought people, even though they're already wrapped. So this one's for my friend Anna um, and this is Here is the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. I haven't actually read this book. But I'd seen some reviews of it. It's kind of like a novel in verse about a like romantic relationship where two people have been having an affair and one of them dies. And it's about like the woman trying to come to terms with that when no one knew they were together. But I've heard someone say it was good people who liked normal people. And my friend loved normal people. So I got her that. I got my friend for the secret Santa. And so she's just bought a house. Um, and I bought her Penguin Cloth Bound Classics version of Little Women, which is one of her favourite books. It's like really beautiful and I thought it would look nice on her new bookshelf. I got my mum The Most Fun We Ever Had by Claire Lombardo, which I also haven't read, but which Han from Let's Talk About Books Baby really enjoyed. So I very much trust her and this also means I might cheekily read that after mum's read it. But my mum's just so hard to buy books for because like she's got such specific tastes. Got my dad... The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead because I think I really like it. I mean, how could you not? It's such an amazing book. Um, but also he like studied history and it's like kind of historical. I think I really like it. And I got my sister who never reads any of the books that I buy her, but who the other day claimed to me that she was in the mood to read. I got a normal people because I don't actually think she's ever read it. And she really liked, she read One Day by David Nichols for the first time this year. And she really liked that. And I thought, I think she'll like normal people. And then because Alex is spending Christmas with us now, I was like, oh snap, I'm gonna, like they can't all open their books and not, and he won't have one. So I bought him The Many Star Out Goats by John Ronson because last year I bought Alex loads of books because he said he wanted to get into reading. I did him like a little reading list and he really loved The Psychopath Test. He's definitely more of a non-fiction reader than a fiction one. Um, so I thought, why not have some more John Ronson? And this is like, I mean, it came out in 2012, but it looks at the like, secret unit in the army that are trying to work out how to do like mind control. I think you'll find that interesting. So I need to wrap this one. Oh, this is a stocking present for my sister as well, which is like just a little book about her astrological sign, which is Gemini that I thought was cute. So yeah, gonna wrap now. Um, just having my breakfast, I've got a little bagel, um, and look at all my little presents wrapped under the tree. I read another kind of hundred something pages of Under the Udala Trees last night and I'm still enjoying it. It's definitely more of a look at what it was like to be a gay woman in the 1970s in Nigeria, I would say. Um, and yeah, it's a really kind of interesting look at that. I'm finding quite powerful the look at like that up against religion and the characters kind of struggle with her mother's Christianity and, and it's made me just like really angry in a way at, at organised religion. The book is very like good on this, the way that you know there's this thing that was written thousands of years ago that people still to this day try and interpret as being related to to today's world and like how kind of futile it is when like you don't know what they even meant at the time what was meant as an allegory what or even if they did mean that at the time like why that should still have the same gravitas today and yeah it's kind of like a bit of a love story ish yeah I've got about 100 pages left so I'll hopefully finish it this morning but yeah <laughs> I just filmed the video so I may as well record this clip with you propped up. Um, so I finished Under the Udala Trees um, and I 
did enjoy it, definitely. Um, I wasn't blown away by it, which is a little bit disappointing just because I'd really, for whatever reason, hyped this up in my head and like had it as a book that I thought I was going to absolutely love. I did really like the writing style and um, I would definitely read more from Chinello Peranta because yeah, the writing I thought was quite beautiful, quite kind of like meditative. I enjoyed it. And like I said, the the themes were really interesting, especially around like that juxtaposition between like religion and sexuality and the intersections of that and like the brutal realities of that. Like, the author's note at the end is saying that like in 2014, Nigeria legalized a bill criminalizing same-sex relationships. I think for me, just the plot was quite, it was a quiet book, which I don't really mind, but I found the plot a little bit predictable. Like there was nothing wrong with it, but it was just quite, you could kind of see where it was going. But it's definitely a book that I would recommend to people if they were interested in these themes. It just wasn't amazing for me. I'd probably give it like three stars, 3.5 stars. So I'm going into town later on because um, I'm getting my nails done. I've got a couple of little Christmas presents that I need to click and collect, but it's only lunchtime now. So I think I'm going to get started on the final book, which is The Mystery of Henry Pick. So this is the one that my boyfriend picked out for me. So far, my friend is in the lead. My sister's at the bottom of the table. Let's see where this goes. Really cute. So my mum just texts me like, me and a couple of the girls are just sat on the beach having a drink if you want to walk past and say hello to them. And the beach is like right at the bottom of my street. I haven't seen my mum in ages in the flesh. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go do that. It is freezing, but it's a beautiful day. Let me show you. Oh my god, I feel like the day has just totally run away from me. I met my mum and a couple of her friends on the beach and ended up being plied with a glass of Prosecco. And then I had to go to the village for some last minute presents. Uh, it's my dad's birthday on Christmas Eve. And all he wants, bless him, is champagne truffles. But there's a nationwide shortage of Thornton champagne truffles. Can't get them anywhere. So I had to go to the chocolatier and wait in like a half an hour queue and a couple of other places. And I have to leave to go to town in like five minutes. So I've done no reading, but... I can read on the train, so I'm going to take this guy with me. Good morning. Um, so I got my nails done yesterday. These are they. Nice little navy, navy moment. I got quite a lot of the length cut off them, which was sad because I've been growing these out for like a year. But I'm just worried there's going to be like an eight week lockdown and I'll still at the end of it, need to be able to function and not feel like I have clothes pegs taped to my fingers. I'm also, how far I'm into this, like 150 pages into The Mystery of Henry Pick. I'm really enjoying it. It's just so easy to read, fun, lighthearted, quite whimsical. And it's just, I think, what I was in the mood for, like just something to fly through. So it's about basically this library in France where they accept rejected manuscripts. So if you've failed to have your book published and you keep getting rejections, you can go and drop it off there and then they promise to always keep it. And basically this editor stumbles upon this amazing book um, that she gets published, but the guy has died and none of his family knew he'd ever written this book. So it's kind of so far about like the mystery behind that, I guess. It's really reminding me of um, Frederick Bachman's writing style, especially his more kind of like lighthearted writing style. Just the way... Uh, characters are described the narrator's voice is very strong in it and it has that sort of like little bit of absurdist humor i think if you like frederick bachman i like if you liked anxious people i really think you'd actually enjoy that it's translated from the french um i love books set in france and obviously i love like books about books and like the literary publishing industry so yeah i'm just really enjoying this having a very chill day today um and i'm sure i'll get it finished so yeah So I've now finished reading The Mystery of Henry Pick by David and Kinos and I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was a nice little diverting story, I would say. I definitely think it's so Bachman-esque. Like the more I read, the more I was just like, is this 
a Bachman book. It really had that feel. It's quite like moving at the end, you know, similar to Anxious People, I'd say, in the way that it looks at these characters. At the start, they're quite unlikable, but then you get to know more about them. And yeah, it was just like a good story. No complaints. Very absorbing. If, you know, if you're not looking to read anything too heavy or anything that's going to make you think too much, would recommend. I'd say I'd probably give it like a solid three, maybe three and a half. It was, it was fun. Um, so the results are in. My favourite was definitely Dominicana by Angie Cruz. Well done to my friend Alice. The best friend wins. Between Boyfriend and Sister, they're just so different. This book's obviously like a lot more serious. Um, a lot more kind of like earnest. I like the writing style, but plot wise, I had like a few more problems with it. Whereas this is a much more like fluffy kind of lighthearted book, but it was probably a bit more enjoyable to read. Maybe it had a good little twist at the end. I don't know. Let's just say my boyfriend and my sister are both trash. JK. I'm going to end the vlog here because I think it's already quite long. But yeah, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed and I hope you had an amazing Christmas. Obviously, I'd love if you subscribed. My Instagram, my Goodreads, link down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.